Hi everybody and good morning. This is Rainer and my channel Rainier Books. Today I'm going to shoot another video, uh, a TBR for the next coming weeks, which I will film later today. But first I'll take you out on a little trip to Stockholm because I have to go to uh, the laboratorium probably to deliver some blood and some samples to make a regular test. So uh, I'm traveling in the rush hour, which is an interesting test for the Swedish, uh, the strong Swedish answer to the pandemic are really people wearing masks because they're advised to do so just recommended to do so they don't have to of course this is sweden after all so let's get started with this video Well, I've uh, arrived and I traveled about 11, st I traveled 11 stops on the subway or the underground here in Stockholm. And uh, people are advised or recommended, recommended to wear a mask. And I, my count was that the subway wasn't crowded, not like it was rush hour, but I would say that around 25% of people just give a damn about wearing masks and are giving a damn about protecting others. So this is really bad. 25% is my count of people who are not wearing masks, although it is recommended, but it's not uh, obligatory. That's a problem. Behind me is uh, Östra Reons Gymnasium, which is uh, one of Stockholm's oldest and most prestigious high schools in uh, Östermalm, which is the part of Stockholm where I am now, going home from, um, from the lab tests that I did today. So Östra Reons Gymnasium been there a couple of times. Now it's mostly closed because all of the what, 1,500 students who go there are in uh, distant learning. They are at home and being taught from the teachers who probably a few of them sit inside the building right now. But we're not going inside, we're going further. Welcome to Kalaplan in the middle of Esteban. This is a beautiful park here. Square. Yeah. And now we're heading down to uh, the water. Straight ahead. This is the historical museum of Stockholm on Östermalm. The first book I have talked about, I think, last summer is a thriller. It's uh, from South Korea. It's about, um, I think, somebody who worked for organized crime in Seoul. It was celebrated as uh, a work of literary genius, uh, an ex mashup and mashup of Tarantino and things like that. It's from South Korea. It's translated from the Korean by, names of translators are always important, translated by Sora Kim Russell by Un Su Kim, that's the author, and this book is called The Plotters. If you have The Plotters, if you want to read The Plotters with me, please let me know and drop me a comment. 
The second one is from Canada, and I was really surprised that it was so easy to get this book uh, to buy here. Uh, I saw this, I think, on Canada Reads last year, and uh, it interested me. I love the cover because it's sort of reminded me of, of Edward Hopper's paintings. And I also love the description. This is Katie Bickle. Uh, she's an author from uh, Alberta in Canada. And the publisher is Brindle and Glass, which is a smaller Canadian publisher. And uh, this book is awesome, I think. It tells the stories of always brave, sometimes kind of life in Alberta in different kinds. I, I don't actually know if this is a short story collection. It's a debut. It's a loving portrait of the people that you think you know but don't really and to feel even more familiar thanks to her accurate map of one city's past politics and pulse so this is super interesting i think because it deals with alberta and canada where i have never been the third book has been on my list even last year already and i haven't read it so maybe it's this time if you have it if you want to read this together with me please drop me a comment it's a classic from from japan it, this is Yasunari Kawabata, Snow Country, in this beautiful penguin classic uh, edition about a man traveling to the snow country in Japan. Uh, the author was born in Osaka in 1899. I think he, he won the Nobel Prize for uh, literature, and this was translated from the Japanese by Edward G. Seidensticker, Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. The fourth book is a very new one, so I thought I'd throw in some new titles here. Um, maybe you're ready for this. Maybe you are ready for Jonathan Coe's latest novel, Mr. Wilder and Me, that arrived in my mail, I think, seven days ago, ten days ago, maybe. Uh, Jonathan Coe's new novel, the British author. And uh, I don't know so much about this book. It's playing in 1977 about a woman called Callista. Uh, she sets out from Athens to venture into the wider world and the director, Hollywood director Billy Wilder, plays a very important role in that book. So that is definitely interesting. Uh, Mr. Wilder and Me by Jonathan Coe. If you have it, if you want to read it, please let me know. The author of the fifth book is, and I was very happy when I read this last week, is actually one of the jury members of the Scotiabank Giller Prize of 2021. This is the British uh, Asian author Tash Ah and his novel Map of the Invisible World, which is playing in Malaysia. I have read uh, a couple of titles from the long list of the National Book Award of 2020 for fiction. Uh, I have finished Vanessa Vasalka's uh, The Great Offshore Grounds. I read The Winner, uh, that was um, Interior Chinatown. I read Ruman Alam's Leave the World Behind. And I also read The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filio. So I read four of the ten long-listed books. And uh, on my suggestion for Buddy Reads for the next three months, I have two more titles of that long list. A Children's Bible by Lydia Millet that not so many booktubers have discussed. I really want to read this. I would love to read it with someone else. Let me know. And on the long list and forgotten probably almost because I haven't seen anything about this book. The Index of Self-Destructive Acts by Christopher Beha or Christopher Beha was also on the list of the, um, the long list of the National Book Award. That could be my title five and six that I read from the long list. Let me know. And uh, arrived today, actually, and I love the cover. Oh, no, it arrived yesterday. Is I talked about this book earlier. Is Declan Walsh, The Nine Lives of Pakistan, Dispatches from uh, a Divided Nation. That is a beautiful cover. It's a nonfiction book if you want to read it. Camilla Shansi has blurred the book in a irresistible combination of storytelling panache and in-depth knowledge. Declan Walsh brings vividly to life characters and situations that illuminate some of the most significant faces of Pakistan's history. So if you want to travel to Pakistan with me, let me know. And another book that arrived uh, is uh, number nine. And this, I think, is it's, it, this must be a very beautiful novel. 2020. It's by Andrew 
O'Hagan from Glasgow in Scotland, and it's called Mayflies. Mayflies is about friends uh, in the 80s and how they grew up. In the summer of 1986, in a small Scottish town, James and Tully ignited a friendship based on music films and the rebel spirit. With school over and the looked work and the locked world of their fathers before them, they rushed towards the climax of their youth, a magical weekend in Manchester, the epicenter of everything that inspires them in working-class Britain. There, against the greatest soundtrack ever recorded, a vow is made to go at life differently. Thirty years on, half a life away, the phone rings, Tully has news. A tender goodbye to an old union, Mayflies is the st story of joy and the costs of love, and I'm really looking forward to read this. Number 10 on this list is... Um, I got this as a present from Canada. I um, I was so happy about this. Uh, cut you down from um, Sam Weeby once again. Thank you for uh, sending me that book. The Quiet Midden sent me that book, and I, I was really glad because I couldn't get it here. It's the second novel of uh, Wakeland. If any one of you has this book, because it's not so easy to have it in Europe at least, if you are in North America and you have this, and if you want to read it, please let me know. I might read this anyway, if if I find a buddy reader, or if I, if I don't find a buddy reader. It's time to read it, just time to read it. Uh, situated in Vancouver. These are the 10 titles. So if you think one of these 10 titles, I could read it with Rainier, with Rainer from Rainier Books, then <laughs> please let me know in the comments below. I will uh, sort of make my TBR based on your answers. Thanks for watching this video and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.